today. <laughs> I am exploring our penguin beach that we happen to have here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. My name is Jen and I'm so very excited to be joining you all today. And today we're going to be talking all about penguins. Are you ready to join in on the fun? I am too, right? So our goal today is to be able to have fun with these feathered friends. And so I'm going to go ahead and take off my hat a little bit, put my binoculars down, and we're going to go on ahead about talking a little bit more about penguins. So with that, friends, my name is Jen, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's uh, Penguin June Keys Habitat. Now, I'm not alone in the studio today. I also have Kaya, who's going to be helping us change a lot of the pictures that you might see behind me. And then we also have James here, who's available too, uh, to answer any kinds of questions that you might have. Now, for today, what we're going to get a chance to do is to do a lot of exploring about penguins. We're going to do a lot of movement. So hopefully, maybe you've got some stretching in today because we're going to be moving a lot like penguins. And then also, uh, if you happen, there's going to be times where we're just going to be watching the penguins because scientists, something that they like to do is just sit and watch the penguins. Much like how I was doing with my sun protection on, my hat, and my binoculars. Lucky for you, though, you don't need any binoculars because you have it all right behind us. So as we go on ahead and we take moments throughout our class today to pause and to make observations and to look and see what the penguins are doing, we would love to hear from you. So that might be you asking questions. That might be you making observations and telling us what you see. Whatever it might happen to be, we would love your participation. And so the best way to do that is to go on ahead and uh, let your teacher know the questions, the observations, and they're going to type it on in to where James is in our other part of our studio, and he's going to send those questions and those observations right on in. All right, is everyone ready? I'm hoping that's a yes. I think I heard a few yeses far away. Yes, I did. All right, friends. So today we are going to be start by exercising our eyeballs. All right, so we can maybe blink one, Blink another, blink them both. All right, looks like our eyeballs are ready to go. And what our eyeballs are gonna do is we're gonna first take a look at our penguin beach. Now today we're gonna be exploring the penguins on land and then eventually we're going to dive underneath and we're gonna explore underneath the water together too. But all of it's really exciting, but let's go ahead and let's start on penguin beach. I'm gonna step out of the camera for a second and I would love for you just to kind of watch the penguins. And what do you notice? You can go on ahead and, you know, maybe talk to a friend next to you about what you notice. Maybe that friend is invisible, like me, because I was an only child. Or maybe you have a sibling or a cousin that you live with that you can tell them. Maybe your friend is your pet dog or cat, or maybe pet worm, or maybe your friend is an adult, right? Whoever it may be, go on ahead and maybe just want to shout out loud. That's fine too. What do you notice on our penguin beach? Hmm. If it's easier for you to just like write that on in and send it on over into our Google Doc, that's totally fine too. Hmm. Well, I definitely notice a few things, right? One, they're hanging out on land, right? They're our beach. There's a few in the water too, but I mainly notice a lot of these animals on land. Did you notice that too? Hmm, what else do you notice? I'm seeing that these penguins kind of blend in a little bit with a lot of the the rocks and the land that we're seeing, right? It kind of, the land is kind of gray and brown and white, right? And these penguins, well, they are black and white on them. So they kind of match a little bit or blend in or camouflage with maybe the, the rocks right here. Hmm, what else do you notice? I think I'm seeing these penguins, right? Oh, I noticed a lot of them are going into the water right now. Did you see that too? Some of 
them look like they're just stretching. All right. Can we practice stretching like a penguin? Let's get our morning stretches on in. All right. Excellent. Kai is doing it too. Hopefully you're doing it with me. Put out those, those wings. Maybe you could stretch to the left. Ah. All right. Let's stretch to the right. Ah. And penguins. Oh, did you see that? That penguin was very flexible. It moved to the back. So if we take our wings, we can move to the back and maybe we're cleaning ourselves. So yum, 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 yum. At least that's the sound I imagine them sing, saying or singing. Yum, 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 yum. What do you think they might be doing as they're stretching? Like right here. Huh. Kind of looks like to me that they're cleaning. Right? Maybe poking all those feathers with their beaks, making sure that the, all their feathers are beautiful. So let's practice stretching one more time like a penguin. All right. Wings out. And let's clean ourselves. Twist. Um, yum, 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 yum. All right. Twist the other way. Clean. Um, yum, 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 yum. All right. Very nice, penguins. So it looks like we have stretched ourselves. Ah. Oh, yeah. Ah, very nice, right? And now we're all clean because we took a, maybe like a penguin shower, right? We were here, we are cleaning ourselves or preening our feathers, making sure that all our feathers are nice and beautiful and in order there. Anything else that you notice? Huh. Oh, did you see that? Some of them, oh, they're kind of still stretching, right? But they are also getting a chance to, maybe we have some that aren't morning penguins, right? Maybe they're, they're like you and you don't really like mornings. So you're just like, oh, five more minutes, please. Five more minutes of rest, right? Or maybe you're like, ah, oh, like that other penguin, right? Stretching, getting ready to start their day, getting some good stretches in, moving around. And hopefully you're moving with me like a penguin, right? And so all these penguins are having all these different behaviors that help get them going in the morning, kind of like us. All right, now it looks like we're getting some questions in. So we're going to maybe ask, uh, we're going to answer some of these questions as you get a chance to watch these penguins bright and early. Is there one that you're most like? Like, are you like the stretching one? Are you like the one that's just finishing their morning swim? Like to be in the pool in the morning. Whoosh, go swimming. Are you more like the one? That's right here. Right? <laughs> but as you go ahead and maybe try to find a penguin that you're kind of like, let's answer some of these questions. So how long do penguins live? Well, it definitely depends on the variety, but they can live anywhere between 20 to 30 years. So that's a pretty long time for an animal. Um, do they mate for life is another question, right? Like, are there some that are maybe couples on here? Um, it's not always the case. So there are some instances where penguins do not mate for, for life. Um, and a little bit about uh, why do penguins slide on ice? Uh, so here, actually, let's talk about that, about their environment that they live in, their habitat here. Is there any ice? Hmm. No ice. Did that surprise you? Seeing our penguin beach, but no ice. Yeah, it is kind of surprising, huh? Now, we can go on ahead and take a quick look at maybe where penguins live around the world. But here's our Magellanic penguins. And do you see any ice here out in the natural wilds of Chile and Argentina? <laughs> Not so much, right? So these South American penguins live on these beautiful beaches. And the weather is actually kind of similar to what it would be in California. It's part of the reason why we're a great place to be able to have these penguins. And so these penguins, most penguins actually, uh, don't live on the ice or in ice for the entire lifetime. I'm going to step off screen so you can see this a little bit better. But basically everywhere that you see blue, that's uh, blue highlighted on our map, is where we have penguins that live. Now, you may notice 
that most of these places do not have ice, right? We have Galapagos Islands, no ice. Chile, all South America, no ice, not so much, not right there, right? Africa, nope. Australia, New Zealand, nope, right? There's what we have, Antarctica down here. And believe it or not, there are 17 different types of penguins. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of different kinds of penguins. But here's the interesting thing. Only about two live in ice full time all year round. Some of them come and visit the ice, but not even all of them do that, right? So only about two actually live there full time. Uh, and we'll get into maybe sliding on ice in a little bit. Uh, why can't they fly? You know what? That is a great question. And what we're going to do right now is I see there's a lot of questions coming on in. And a lot of it is about swimming. And maybe the way that they might even catch their food and if they fly. So on Penguin Beach, we noticed that they didn't really fly, right? Like they flapped their wings around for the stretching, right? That we did our penguin stretches with. But they didn't really fly. But what we're going to do now is we're going to switch to our underwater penguin cam. I would love for you to notice what's going on there. Are they flying? What do you, what do you see? How do you think these animals are able to catch their food? All right, so those are some of the questions that I'm gonna leave you with if you notice them flying underneath the water. And then also, how do you think these animals might catch their food? And thank you all for asking a ton of questions. We're going to get to them in just a minute. But I'd love for us just to first make some observations. And if it helps to maybe, you know, move like a penguin as it kind of flies underneath, you can do that too. All right, so I'm just going to give you a few minutes just to kind of take a look. And you may see me from time to time moving through kind of like a penguin. And remember, you can move like a penguin too. Maybe you're like that swimming penguin in the middle of the morning that likes to get their swimmings, their swimmies in. All right, what do you notice? Welcome back. <laughs> so maybe you've had a chance to notice that these penguins can do a lot of different things underneath the water, right? We can see them poop <laughs> underneath the water. In case you're ever wondering what that penguin poop looks like, ta-da, there it is. Very white and wispy. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have them floating, right? These are animals that are great at kind of floating on top. Also, did you see how they used their wings? They were flying underneath the water. Do you want to practice with me? We're going to take those flippers and we're going to fly. Fly with those wings. All right. Very nice. And maybe we saw them go from the top to the bottom. So maybe we take our wings and we fly downwards. And then we might come up. We could do that one more time. All right, hopefully you're moving a lot like a penguin, right? Ah, oh, that's a pretty good workout. I think I get why some of the penguins like to be underneath the water, especially those morning swimming penguins. All right, friends. Uh, so these animals, they do not necessarily fly on land, but they've actually grown to, sw uh, to fly underneath the water. That's because they're much better swimmers than they are flyers. And so their food is going to be located in the water. So what do you think these animals might eat? Huh. Well, if you think we live in the water, we had a chance to kind of maybe see how they move. They're pretty fast, right? So they probably chase after some of their food. Hmm. Well, if you're thinking fish, 
Yeah, they definitely eat fish. If you're thinking krill, you got that right, right? If you're thinking maybe even squid, uh-huh, right? So they eat lots of different kinds of food, but mainly fish and krill are going to be their, one of their all-time favorites. All right, friends. So um, hopefully that answers a little bit about what they eat and why they can't fly is because they have grown to just be much better swimmers. And so because they're much better swimmers, their bones are more dense than the average bird, right? Because if you think about a bird that has to fly a lot to be able to lift off the ground, right? Your bones should be pretty light. So that way you don't have to carry a lot of weight. Well, in this case, when you're underneath the water, that weight is great, right? Helps you so that way you can sink and fly underneath the water and grab whatever tasty food that you want. All right, we also got the question of how do they drink water? That's a good question, right? Because you can't take your, your, your little wing and you can't like stick it in a mug and maybe drink like you would normally. And so they get a lot of their water from food. So they get a lot of their fresh water and many actual uh, ocean animals get a lot of their fresh water from the food that they eat. Mm -hmm. True story. All right, friends. Um, is their skin smooth or rough is another question that we are getting. It does seem really interesting, right? So I'm going to step out of the screen so you can check out. Oh, actually, ah, I can share. All right. So if we go on ahead and we look at our Magellanic penguin here, what do you notice? Hmm. Definitely looks maybe almost like a little rough, right? But funny enough, even though it doesn't really look like it, these are actually feathers. Yep, very, very, very small feathers that these animals have that they use to basically, well, cover their entire body. And actually, I have some feathers that I can share with you all, and we can get even a closer look at those feathers. Are you all ready to join me? All right, let's go. I'm going to go over to our document camera, which is great at zooming in on things. So, I turn my document camera on with the light. All right. I'm going to grab my penguin feathers here. It takes a minute to just kind of warm up. There we go. And here, I have some penguin feathers. Now, obviously, kind of hard to see, right? And just to give you an idea, that's the size of my finger right there. So, I am going to zoom on in nice and close so we can get a chance to look at some of these penguin feathers. Ta-da! There we go. And I'll bring out even another one. Oh. There we go. Even another one right there. All right. So here we have some of these penguin feathers. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. What do you notice about our penguin feathers? Put some on all different sides so you can get a chance to see. Now, if it's really kind of a little bit windy in the office, which is why we're seeing them kind of blow around a little bit. But do you see what I see? Do you see how it's black? Uh, only the tips, right? Here, here, and maybe here. I guess this one has a little bit of black underneath, too. But mainly on the edges, right? But it also looks really super fuzzy right down here, huh? See lots of fuzz here and a ton of fuzz right here, less fuzz up here. So it's actually what happens are all of these fuzzy parts is what keeps our penguin warm. So what we're seeing, whoops, well that's why I had two feathers stuck together. So what we're seeing here are all of these fuzzy feathers that all interlock with one another. So all of that fuzz is like a blanket that keeps the animal nice and warm against its skin. And then all of these feathers at the very end are all the parts that keep our bird waterproofed. So that way water doesn't get in and make all of these down feathers, which are the soft fluffy ones up against the body. That's how they're able to stay warm. So hopefully that's able to answer some of your questions about uh, the skin because it's actually feathers that are on top of their skin. And then why do or don't they need snow and ice? 
Mm, that is a good question, right? It's all about their habitat, where they choose to live. So each animal, each type of penguin, right? Because we said there's 17 different varieties. And all of them, well, funny thing is they all live in the southern hemisphere, meaning the south part of the entire world. And that's because that's where their food is, right? So, and it's also where it's not too hot. Now, if you're thinking, well, the Galapagos is kind of warm, and so is parts of South America, well, that is true. But the water's really cold, and all their food is nice and cold. And so it's a great place for many of these animals to be able to, to get a lot of their, their food, right? And that's the most important thing, food and the temperature. And those two things make a very happy penguin. And so some of them like to be in ice full time. And we can actually, we were looking a lot at many of these penguins that kind of live in warmer weather, right? We can see, but here we have colder animal, colder penguins, right? What differences do you notice with these ones? Hmm. Well, they kind of, well, they're actually bigger. It's a little hard to see in this picture, even though maybe it looks like it's bigger than me, right? But here we have an emperor penguin. And these ones, it's, it's hard to see, but they actually have extra down, right, underneath their, their actual, or inside their feathers. And then they also have really, uh, they have feet, right? And these feet have lots of claws on them that help them really kind of grip the ice there. So there's some differences between the penguins. But regardless, they still eat that same food. They still eat fish or they still eat krill. If you're wondering, well, maybe how long is it that they can hold their breath? It depends on the penguin. For emperors, for instance, it's about 20 minutes. For Magellanics, it's only about five to eight minutes. And part of that too is trying to figure out where their food is, right? Maybe it's right off the coast. Maybe they have to swim and dive a little bit deeper for it. That might help them to be able to hold their breath for more time or less time, depending upon where that food is in the ocean, right? Um, and so hopefully they answer some of your questions about how they're actually able to breathe or how long they can breathe. Uh, many times these animals will just hold their breath because they have lungs, much like how we do. And so, you know, they're birds, right? These birds have lungs and they're able to hold their breath for that amount of time. So if we were more like a penguin, right? And we want to, we'd have to hold our breath. <gasps> and then fly underneath the water, right, and swim. So that's what we would have to do if we were a penguin. Wanna try it with me? <gasps> Don't forget to breathe, right? They have to come back up to the surface to be able to breathe. And what we're gonna do, uh, is you can get a chance to see, right, these penguins and how they're able to move. Woo, must be uh, very windy out there right now. Lots of, lots of things happening in the water. Oh, do you see how that one got back? Oh. Right, they're breathing, so they're hopping back up, taking a breath, and they're coming back down again, right? Wow, pretty cool to be able to see them move so quickly. And if you notice all of those bubbles coming out of their feathers, well, that's some of that air that's trapped underneath their feathers that's coming out, right from those feathers that we saw earlier. If you're wondering how fast they swim, they can swim um, anywhere between like maybe about like 15-ish miles an hour, at least that's the number that we have on file for another variety of penguin called a gentoo penguin. So about 15 miles an hour. And um, let's see, they, oh, here we go. Here's some gentoos right there. And you can see them in the snow, right? So it's another, the other version of the, of a penguin that's in snow. And we could see, if you're wondering what that stuff is right there, that they're, that kind of pinkish orangey stuff, well, let's just say their food was pinky orangey in color. So what do you think that might be? Not crumbs. You got it, penguin poop, right? So we had a chance to look at the Magellanic penguin poop earlier, right? That was kind of feathery and white. Well, they probably eat more fish versus our gentoos right here, right? We see more orangey colors, and that's because they may eat, at least right now in this picture, they're eating more krill, and that krill is that more orangey in color, right? So you can see how they're walking in ice, and maybe you can walk in ice with me, where you put out your penguin wings, right? And we waddle. Hmm. 
So, hopefully you're putting out your penguin arms. <laughs> I guess you kind of like arms. We have our arms, right? And we are waddling. Now, why do you think we would have to walk like this? Hmm. Any guesses? For balance. You got it, right? So if we put our hands down and waddle, it may be tricky if you're in ice, right? You may ah, accidentally slip. We don't want that because then you end up slipping in a lot of that krill poop, right? But instead, if you put out your penguin wings, right, you can go on ahead and balance yourself and walk a lot better in the sand or in the sand, in the snow. All right. Are you walking with me still? I hope so. All right. Looks like Kyle's walking with two. It's awesome. Maybe you're a penguin with better balance and maybe your, your wings are a little lower. Mmm. Or maybe, oh, Kaya has excellent balance. She's walking like this. Right? Maybe she's walking like a Magellanic penguin who doesn't have to deal with all of that ice. Very nice, friends. Good job waddling like a penguin with me. Ah, oh, such a good time. Maybe we could see some of these animals waddle too. I'm going to step off the camera and I'm going to answer a few of your questions as we get a chance to observe our penguins here, just kind of hanging out. And uh, one of their questions is, do they only live in the south, right? Because we saw them in the southern hemisphere and they do only live in the southern hemisphere. If you're wondering, well, what's in the north if there aren't any penguins? Well, it's their cousins called alcids. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole other set of birds that are a little bit different than our penguin friends, but have similar adaptations, have similar features that are also kind of black and white too. Um, and we'll get a chance to maybe see a picture of those in a little bit, but I just want to answer a few other questions. Do they have hair and feathers? Mmm, not quite hair. They're much like birds. And these birds have feathers. Ooh, looks like one of our aviculturist volunteers are out saying hello to some of our penguins. All right, so uh, how do they jump in the water with small feet? Oh, that's a good question. You know what? I don't, maybe, I don't know if we'll be able to see anyone going in, but if you imagine, I'm all about dancing with my little hands here. If you imagine, they basically just kind of waddle and then they plop, plop into the water. So right now, since this is a webcam, what's really cool is that Kai is able to move the timeline and we could check to see when maybe we're seeing penguins doing different behaviors. So it's a really cool way to see like, oh, maybe they aren't doing anything great right now. And you can always scroll back right here and you can just like how Kai is doing, right, with the little little hand right here, and then you could check back to see, are there any maybe sometimes fun behaviors that you can get a chance to notice? Oh, so close, Kaya, right? We have one that's right on the beach there, uh, but maybe if we're lucky enough, we're able to see it in. But basically, it waddles, and then once it's right next to the water, it just bloop, plops on in and is able to swim. It's, uh, it's not super shallow right there, so basically, you can just kind of plop in and go down into the water that way. We had another question of how, oh, do they live in the holes in the back of the exhibit? They sure do. So if you see here, good observation, right? Hole. There's another hole and another one and another one. And there's more back here too, right? And so these animals, they are burrowing animals, meaning that when they're ready to, to nest and to have new young, they will burrow. They will find a spot in land and this time they didn't dig through the rock that we have those in there for them and they will dig into the land and they will create a nice little underground nest for their eggs right so that's how they're actually able to to nest and to, to relax and so many times it's a couple right um that will go in and will nest and have that little burrow as their own little home uh, and so we also had another question, too, about uh, asked if we could feed the penguins. So kind of like how Kaya was doing earlier, right? Looking at the moving that bar over back and forth right down here. Sometimes you can actually watch our aviculturists feed the penguins, which is really cool. They'll feed it on the beach. So we have two penguin cameras uh, on our website. We have our penguin beach and our penguin underwater 
view basically and so penguin beach is the one that that uh, will have our aviculture so it'll usually sit somewhere around here with a large bucket of fish and then they'll go on ahead and feed many of the penguins it's really fun to watch um and so I'd recommend just kind of scrolling back through and seeing if you can find that happen. There isn't actually like a designated time in which it occurs. Um, so we can't necessarily say 10 a.m. on a Tuesday. Um, but it's you just have to kind of scroll back and see when that may happen. And it's really fun to watch. So we definitely recommend. All right. Um, and so let's see. So we also had, oh, looks like there actually are about times. I was wrong. So James went ahead and sent in around 9.30, 1.30, and 3.30-ish. So that may help you in regards to scrolling, you know. Maybe you don't have to scroll as much. But 1, 9.30, 1.30, 3.30-ish. Thereabouts are the roundabout times in which they are fed. Um, you know, within these burrows, this is where they have their babies. And we have had uh, several types of or several several babies here at the aquarium of the pacific and many of them still live with us now but a lot of them have also gone to other aquariums and zoos too so here is a picture of one of the baby magellanic penguins is that what you expected it to be maybe you can lay flat like a baby penguin with me <laughs> i guess its wings are or is more to the side more to the back right friends and so this baby penguin they are completely gray instead of that black and white color how do you think that might help our baby penguin to survive being all gray hmm wait a minute wasn't penguin beach mainly gray ah oh, so i wonder if those baby chicks actually blend in with the beach wouldn't that be interesting? As a matter of fact, as penguins, when they have babies, they have about one to two penguins, penguin babies each. Um, and so they're able to maybe hopefully have at least one of them survive. It's kind of tricky out in the wild. You never know what might, um, what, how these animals might survive or if they might not. But our penguins here have, uh, have definitely lived their last lives here at the aquarium. And like I said, some of them, when they're grown up a little bit more, they end up going to other zoos and aquariums and are able to do well there. So here's another picture of some of our baby penguins. They look a little different at this stage. Yeah, right? So they don't have those stripes that we saw in our Magellanic penguins before, but they definitely are having that white and that black coloration too, right? So this is when they're not a baby. They're kind of like a teenager, I guess, if you will, in this photo right here. All right, friends, uh, we did get another question about what is krill, right? That's a great question. I actually have a little disc that has some krill in it. It's not alive anymore, but it is kind of frozen in time. So let's go on ahead and let's look at that krill. We're going to go back to our document camera to be able to find that krill. Except I seem to have... Maybe, all right, maybe misplaced it, friends, because right now, I, oh, there it is, I found it, here we go, all right, so, thank you, friends in the studio to help me find it, so here we go, we're moving our krill over, and this is krill, so this is what we're seeing right here, and these are basically little teeny tiny, almost shrimp-like animals, now, if we go back to the document camera, and you could see my finger, right boop so these krill are about the size of like two of my fingernails together so maybe about like this big so they're very very small right but this krill is what whales eat it's what those gen 2 penguins were eating right having that same kind of colored poop right so this is what krill is they're almost like little teeny tiny shrimp that live in the ocean and they are a huge food source for many animals now, because they are so small, they move in groups. Yeah, like schools of krill, basically. So you can see if krill's in the water because sometimes the water will change color a little bit because there's so many of these in here. And they move hundreds all together swimming around in the ocean. It's pretty awesome to see. All right, friends. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of what krill look like. Um, we also got a question of, can we have penguins as pets? Oh, 
That's a great question, right? These animals are absolutely incredible and very cute and look very cuddly. But unfortunately, they aren't great as pets. They poop everywhere. They need a lot of water to swim. They need to be in groups to be social with one another, right? And so um, there's a lot that goes into building a habitat like we have here at the aquarium. As you can see, they don't like to be alone, right? It's them and maybe like a thousand of their buddies that they like to hang out with. So it's kind of tricky to be able to have them as pets and they do much better out in the wild or here at the aquarium where they get lots of care and they're looked after constantly. So good question though. Um, how cold or warm is the habitat? So everything is what we call, uh, to my knowledge, ambient temperature, meaning that's all one temperature. Uh, we have the same, or it's the same temperature as it is outside, right? So um, this habitat doesn't necessarily, isn't like completely closed in, it's actually open, there's open air. So it's the same temperature as it would be here, or you know, as the air temperature would be at any time of day. So during the summer, maybe it gets up to like 85, 90, 95. And during the winter time, maybe right now it's probably like 65 or something like that. So definitely changes depending upon the season. And to my knowledge, unless any of my teammates happen to know differently, the water is also kind of ambient temperature too. It's whatever the water temperature, like if you have a pool, right, um, and you fill it with water, well, that would pretty much, to my knowledge, be the temperature that it would be um, right here, except without any kind of heater or anything like that. So, good questions. All right, so um, what are their predators is another question that we received. Huh. That's a good question, right? Because these penguins live all over the world. Well, mainly in the Southern Hemisphere, but pretty much in Argentina, in New Zealand, in Australia, in the Galapagos Islands, in Antarctica, right? They live in a ton of different places. But one thing that they all have in common is that they have to fish for food, right? Literally, they have to swim around. Like we were swimming like penguins earlier and you had to go on ahead to be able to grab your food. And so, well, the same animals that also kind of live in those environments that also like fish or maybe some birds and mammals that go after those fish. So some of their predators include sharks. Sometimes it's orcas. Other times it might be a leopard seal. Just depends on the location. But those are their general predators, right? And then we also got another question about can they catch a cold? from being in the cold water. Well, lucky for them, friends, right? They have those amazing feathers that have the fluffy on the inside and the waterproof on the outside, right? So that's their way that they could protect themselves, but they also have a very healthy diet. So our aviculturists here, the ones that take care of these wonderful penguins, they are the ones that make sure that everyone's eating well, that if they need vitamins, that they have vitamins that they have in their food, and they're eating a nice balanced diet. So that's how they're able to uh, take care of the penguins to hopefully not have them catch any colds, right? And we did get a question about are puffins related to them? And that is great because maybe Kaya can go on ahead and show us one of these beautiful animals. So remember how we were talking about there are some alces or some animals, some birds that live in the northern hemisphere, right? All the penguins live in the south. These would be an example of them. So these are some horned puffins that we have right here. Horned because, well, do you see that little part above their eye? That's a horn, right? So here's an example of an animal that lives in the northern part of the world, and they have very similar foods. So they too go on ahead and eat a lot of fish, sometimes krill, sometimes squid, but mainly a ton of fish. And they too are also mainly black and white, right? So there's that same kind of camouflage that, would th that we see here. And instead of living on beaches, a lot of times they live on cliffs of, cliffs of the ocean, right? Or rock cliffs right there. And that's, you can see a picture here, right? That they are just kind of hanging out on a ledge, which is kind of cool to be able to see. So these are their northern cousins, if you will. All right, so there we go. Ah, here's a nice picture of the, the puffins, right? And all friends that live up in the north in this kind of highlighter green. And then we have our penguins that live in that blue. So you can see all the different areas that these animals live in. Hmm. Now, you know, we did get a question of who protects the eggs. And, you know, it's really, it's really, well, 
up to kind of like each parent and they both kind of help out in one form or fashion. So here we can see that the egg that this Magellanic penguin is sitting on, something that we do here to make sure that the egg is healthy is we do something called candling, where we don't put a candle, but we put a light up to the egg and we're able to see inside to see if, a, if that penguin there is doing, doing well and developing healthy inside of that egg. And here's a picture of that actual penguin egg right there. Now, penguin eggs, as you can see, are kind of, well, what shape do you notice? Hmm. They're kind of oval, right? They're kind of oval, kind of like the eggs that, that we might eat, right? Kind of that same oval shape, right? And so that oval shape really kind of is perfect for these Magellanic penguins to kind of sit, and some of their feathers go over it to help protect that the egg and to keep it nice and warm. Now, in our Alcid's case, right, looking at those puffins, their shape actually of the egg is just a little bit different. It's not a perfect oval for these animals. It's kind of smushed on one end. So it's, it almost looks like a shape of a light bulb almost, where it's skinny on one side and then it's round on the other. And so what that does is since these animals lay their eggs on rock cliffs, right, we don't want that egg to just fall off into the ocean. That would be really sad. But the puffins are really smart. They have developed their, it's like a teardrop shape, right? They've developed almost like a teardrop shaped egg. And that teardrop shape basically helps it. So if it rolls, well, it basically rolls around in a circle instead of rolling off the cliffside. So it's a really cool, special way that these animals have been able to so, well, make sure their eggs stay safe. All right, friends. So, here we are back on Penguin Beach, right? And with that, uh, we did get a question of, you know, why there are different kinds of penguins. And that is a really good question too, right? We only have one variety here at the aquarium. We happen to have our Magellanic penguins. But like I said, there's about like 16 other types of penguins. So there's lots of different kinds. And with these penguins, well, you know, you can't all live in the same place and just eat all the same food. So maybe you might be a penguin that's like, haha, I know that I can get the same food if I just move a little bit more over there, right? And so then you swim like a penguin. You can swim with me. Swim, swim, swim. I guess we got to hold our breath as we swim, right? <gasps> Coming up to breathe, <sighs> right? And so you swim to a different area and you're like, wow, this place is great. And it has a ton of fish and a ton of food. I'm going to tell a few friends and then we're all going to hang out here. That way we can go wherever we want. We can eat as much as we want. This is a great place, right? And then they might bring a few friends and then maybe they have babies and maybe it ends up becoming a new type of penguin over time, right? And so depending upon where the food source is and how many penguins over time, they just might move to lots of different areas and become all different kinds of penguins. So that is a really good question, right? And we did get another question of whether or not these penguins will ever be released. Now, these penguins are part of what we call a species survival plan. And so um, us, along with many of the other aquariums, have either received many of these penguins uh, deemed unreleasable back out into the wild. And so they are, they are living out here at the aquarium. Um, and so with that, you know, since they aren't able to go back out into the wild due to one reason or another, we have them here, but we also have kind of like a, a breeding program here. And we share this breeding program with many other aquariums and zoos. And so some of them, uh, you can go on ahead and, you know, uh, like for instance, if some of our penguin couples have had many babies, and so some of the babies we might keep here and many others we will release out into the other aquariums. So that way our genetic diversity, right? So we can make sure that other penguins at other zoos and aquariums are also happy and healthy too. But if there was anything to like ever happen and all the Magellanic penguins got wiped out, um, then this is part of a way to also be able to help protect their, their species too and eventually 
redistribute it back out into the wild. So hopefully that answers your question. Oh my goodness, friends, it is already 10 o'clock. My goodness, this time has gone so quickly. Now I did get one last question, which I'd like to answer, which was, was how do, th what do they sound like? And I don't know if Kaya happens to have a, a sound clip of it. Um, I know I've been practicing my, my penguin sounds really nicely. You know, I gain a lot of inspiration from James. He does a really great penguin impression. And I can go, ah, 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 ah. And that's like my best impression, but I don't know if Kaya can bring up the actual sound. Let's see. So hopefully you're able to hear it. <laughs> uh, if you can't, at least you heard my impressionation, impersonation of one. I've been working on it for the past three months. So hopefully I did it some justice or maybe you're able to hear it now too. Uh, but friends, thank you all so very much for joining me today and getting a chance to learn a little bit about how penguins move, right? How they waddle, or maybe if they're in the snow, how they're able to waddle with their wings out, right? How they're able to swim underneath the water, how they're able to move, how they're able to stay warm, and how they're able to catch their food, and so much more. So thank you, friends, once again for joining us today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care, everyone.